So you guys really love the last video where I made different designs and showed you before and after alterations. And today we're going to look at some more designs, but this time around it's going to be slightly more advanced. So let's get into it. Now it's great being able to show people how a design looks, but even more impressive if they can actually experience it too. And this leads to them understanding how it's going to behave. And so learn more about Framer later in today's video and how to show off your designs. And so we have a pretty basic poster design here on the screen. If we then make one crucial change to this poster, as you can see here, what would you say has been done to this new design? What graphic design principle has actually been implemented into the second design on the right? And so if you're not aware of all of the graphic design principles, I do suggest that you look back at my older videos or just check elsewhere on the internet and do familiarize yourself with all of the graphic design principles. If you can master those principles, they will elevate your designs to new heights. Okay, so the hand and the light bulb on the design on the right is actually using flow. It's going to lead the viewer's eye upwards towards the top left, like so. Flow is all about the movement and direction that you lead the viewer's eye around your graphic design, and it just makes the composition look really neat and effective. So you can see here that the viewer will see the focal point of the hand and the light bulb, and their eye will be ushered up to the top left. It also makes a nice clear diagonal divide across the design. And this also creates a nicer focal point because it's slightly larger and it's just a lot neater than the focal point beforehand. And also some bonus tips, who knows what graphic design principle is in use in the text in the top left. Of course, this is hierarchy, but it also could be seen as contrast. So let's move on to the next design, which could be seen as a app screen, or it could just be like a banner or a poster. So this artwork is going to be around finance and we need to add some text onto this artwork. And I know many people stumble when it comes to choosing fonts and using typography in their graphic designs. So let's try and clear that confusion up. So I'm gonna have a title that reads easy finance. And then I want a tagline saying save money easily. So I've told you before about how to choose typography for your designs. You want to look at the design and see what kind of vibes it gives off, what kind of personality does the design have and what does the message evoke. We can see that we have very bold colors and a very bold kind of illustration and the design looks kind of playful. It's not really serious and it's not really kind of corporate in a sense. So you want to be pulling out all of these words, these keywords that relate back to the design and then relate that back to a typeface style. So you want to be thinking, are you going to be choosing a sans serif? Is it going to be upper or lower case? You might even go for a serif or even a slab serif. And also, of course, what about the tagline? What are you going to use when it comes to the font choices? The financial sector is serious, but the artwork doesn't look serious. It looks kind of playful and cartoony. So for my design, I went for a bold uppercase sans serif. And then for the tagline below, I used a thinner sans serif. And of course I aligned everything to the left so it just looks neater this way. And then for a nice final touch, let's add in some color contrast. So when you need to add typography onto your designs, just remember what is the design evoking to the viewer in terms of how it looks. And then you can adapt your font choices to those keywords. So the third design today is going to focus on something that is quite subtle in many respects, but it is pretty crucial and it is a slightly advanced topic as well. We're actually going to be focusing on these call to action social media icons at the bottom. So there are two different things that we could change to this section here to make it more effective as a graphic design. So I want you guys to think, what could we possibly change to this area to make it more effective to the viewer and as a design solution? What would you do here? Okay, so the first thing that I've done is that I've actually made every icon a circle. Now, you might be asking, Tom, why did you do that? They were perfectly fine being a square. There's actually quite an interesting reason behind it, and I'm curious to know if you know why I did that. Sure, they would work as a square, but they actually are more functional as a circle. And here's why. So if you notice on my design, there actually are quite a lot of circles in the cucumber and the illustrations running down the middle. Having the icons as a circular shapes creates repetition. 
A repetition is a great way to reinforce an idea through a design and it just ties everything together in a neat visual harmony setting. Sure, you could have them as squares and that would create contrast, but you might want to create harmony and using circular options here would be useful. And yes, there are going to be some people who say, oh, squares give off contrast and that makes it more visible. It does come down to the designer's subjective choice at the end of the day, but I'm just using this as an example to show you what you might want to consider in your graphic designs. And so the second thing that you might want to change is actually the color of the icons, because these are call to actions. These need to stand out and these are the things that you want a viewer to click on or to notice. And so having them as green, yeah, it does tie in the design together, but they won't stand out as much as a orangey red as you can see here. And again, this is just a small design subjective choice that you might want to be making on your designs. So we've been looking at some contrast, we will look at hierarchy, flow, repetition, and now we're going to be looking at balance. Would you say this web page design has a degree of balance? Do you think this is a balanced graphic design? I would suggest that it's probably not balanced, no. If we look at a revision, we can see that we now have the content on the left in a nice group, and then the text content and the call to action on the right is a similar size that creates a symmetrical balance. This again just creates visual harmony and it doesn't cause a jarring response in the viewer. We know the information and the call to action is on the right, and then the, like the visual candy, so to speak, is on the left. So this is symmetrical balance, but how would asymmetrical balance look on such a design as this? Well, as you can see, we now have the call to action and also the text content slightly smaller than the illustrations on the left, and this would be considered as asymmetrical balance. An asymmetrical balance is when we have a larger kind of group and then a smaller group, as you can see with these pink lines. But did you also notice how I've aligned the text content both horizontally with the illustrations and then also aligned with the home button at the top? So these are the kind of things that you do want to consider when you're designing something for any kind of purpose. Like I said at the start of the video, those graphic design principles are going to be fundamental and the building blocks to your graphic designs. Now, interactive prototyping is the best way to communicate your app and your website designs. The sponsor of today's video, Framer, is a no-code, free-to-use tool making it easy for anyone to become a prototyper, so you can import your existing work and quickly swap out your static elements for pre-built interactive components. This includes things like sliders that actually do slide and inputs that can be filled, as well as buttons that can actually be clicked. Building out a full user flow is super simple as well. You can just link screens, buttons and menu items and pretty soon you will have a prototype that clearly communicates your vision to whoever you want to show it to. Now sign up for free by visiting framer.com forward slash satori. That link is down in the description box below so do give it a try if you are a web or app developer. Also click a video on screen if you want to learn something else today. But until next time guys, design your future today. Peace.